Life Stories. Day in and day out as part of my job. Because part of my role as a radio announcer on a Christian radio station is that I have to speak life that comes from the truth that we find in the Bible every day. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how, much, how I feel. It doesn't matter what kind of day I'm having. It doesn't matter how rebellious my heart is at certain points of the, my life. My job is to get on the radio every day and speak life and encourage the listener. And so often what I found, especially when I was in a in not a good place, um, is that by the end of the program, I would feel better. Even though I, you know, circumstances may have still been exactly the same and I would still need to go and, you know, sort things out. Something in me had shifted. And so I recognized that God was using this platform through his spirit to begin to change me to again to soften my heart to woo me uh, you know on the days when I was struggling to just let the music the Christian music feed my soul the bible verses the word for today the testimonies um, all of that has brought transformation. God is just so kind and I'm just so grateful. But I really wanted to travel. So I'd heard these voices from far across the lands. <laughs> I wanted to go and see them. I love South Africa. Absolutely love South Africa. It was never my intention to leave. But I wanted to go and travel. And so, you know, we didn't come from a family with a lot of money. I had no idea how that was going to happen, but I was determined. And there's a lot to say for determination and perseverance. And so God just made a way um, through friends and uh, just a, amazing his favor he made a way for me to be able to travel to the UK. And I got a two year working holiday visa. Um, traveled to the UK in 1999 and then after a few months I started working with a Christian radio station that was based in West Bromwich broadcasting it was extraordinary actually I mean if <laughs> you know I applied to the BBC when I arrived and for some bizarre reason they didn't take me up just couldn't fathom why but uh might have had something to do with my very strong South African accent when I first arrived, um, aside from probably a whole lot of other things. But anyway, um, I just love God in his providence, how within months, uh, probably after about six months of living in London, I got in touch with a friend who I had co-hosted a program with in South Africa, and him, uh, him and his family had immigrated to England, and he was involved with this Christian broadcaster broadcasting back to Africa on shortwave and on FM in Uganda, in Nigeria, in Zambia. Um, and so it was just amazing. If I look back, I'm just in awe of God, you know, that it was, I fell in love with radio through shortwave. And here God was using me in England I mean, if I had searched for a radio station like this, I don't think I would have found it. But God just led me providentially to this radio station. And so I started working in the news department, broadcasting um, back to Central and Southern Africa on shortwave and on FM on those specific, in those specific countries. Uh, and then on Saturdays, hosting a youth program uh, to the, these these countries, and I did that for about five years. Um, the radio station wanted to hold on to me, and so I got my work permit, and I just stayed. And then through friends and the church I was involved with, I met my now husband, who's a Brahmi, 
and we got married in 2003. There we go. <laughs> I remember that. Um, and uh, yeah, all this time I was working for this Christian radio station, and then they moved to Africa and started broadcasting from Cape Town, and, um, which made sense. They were broadcasting then from Africa to Africa, but it meant that I lost my job, so I was made redundant. And I tried to find another job in radio, um, in the news department, and it just wasn't happening. So I ended up having to get a job, and I worked in teaching then briefly. I did supply teaching in Birmingham for some inner city Birmingham schools. That was very humbling. I, I, I just see how God has led me on these, this journey of uh, humbling me. So, you know, in order to get me to surrender my will and obey, he has loved me. He has wooed me. But there have been times where he's allowed me to be humbled. And that was on one occasion. Um, you know, I was a very well-respected presenter and, and newsreader and now I was in a classroom and I was really out of my comfort zone I had no idea what I was doing I was given a job but I didn't know what I was doing and so I had to throw myself on the mercy of God every single day and these kids were like nothing I'd met before <laughs> I remember getting to school earlier and earlier and earlier so that I would have time to pray over every single chair in that class, go through every single lesson and cry to God quite literally with tears streaming down my eyes for help to teach these children and that God would help me to have control in the class and not make a fool of myself, which I did on numerous occasions. Um, but somehow in those 10 months or so, God taught me some amazing things about him, again, about children, about humanity, about life. Uh, it's a very, very humbling journey. But he also taught me how to communicate better, uh, how to really be a lot sharper and more effective in my communication and a lot more engaging so I count that time as so precious because I had sent my CV to a number of different radio stations with zero results uh, and I'd kept the one for UCB back I just felt I sensed again that um God said I need to hold on to this one. I had my CV and my demo in an envelope with the address for United Christian Broadcasters on. And I think there was probably a, a stamp on there as well. It was ready to go. And I just felt I needed to hold on to it.
stories. So I was in the middle of teaching um, and kind of tried to, trying to muddle my way through, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, God really helped me. And I did learn to love those kids so much. I really love those children and I prayed for them and I saw God move in their lives and I saw God move in me and in the teachers that I was working with. I, I started to enjoy it. And I love how when we begin to surrender to God and we stop fighting him and we begin to see such beautiful things happen in our lives. And so at around about December time, I, I just sensed that God said, send it now. So I posted the, uh, the CV and the demo to United Christian Broadcasters. And it wasn't long after that I heard I had an email from the then manager saying, we've got a position available and we'd like you to go for it. So I applied and I was shortlisted and invited for an interview. And at the time, the interview process included a part of the interview where we were given a subject, a topic, and we were given a couple of minutes to prepare and we had to do an impromptu speech in front of all of the radio staff at the time. And because of my 10 months of very scary humbling experience in front of children where you've got to think on your feet. This is secondary school children. I was teaching from year seven to year 12, I think year 11. Um, I, I had learned over those last 10 months how to react, how to respond uh, instantly. And so I just, it was easy for me. It was almost as if the Lord had prepared me for this moment. Bring it on, Jesus. And so I, uh, I was able to talk really passionately and confidently. And basically, they offered me the job on the day, which was amazing. And so I started at United Christian Broadcasters, um, broadcasting, I think it was an evening program. That was back in 2006. And so I was full time with them. And I was traveling from Birmingham to Stoke-on-Trent. And at the time, they were doing roadworks. Again, um, more roadworks. And I, I, I remember my husband at one stage just saying, look, this is ridiculous. You know, sometimes it would take two, three hours for me to get home or to work. So it was silly. And so... We decided to have a look in Stoke-on-Trent and we found a place, so we moved to Stoke. And it wasn't long after that that I discovered I was pregnant. And so I was pregnant with twins. And our twins were born in Stoke-on-Trent in 2007. Um, and so we, we, uh, we were enjoying them and I was on maternity leave. Um, and so I've worked with UCB full-time, part-time and then during the recession my husband works in construction and he lost his job a couple of times and then he was offered a position in Dubai and this is where um, again God's word has just spoken so deeply to me you know a lot of people ask about how how do you hear God speak to you um, and I've got a new book out called God Speaks, 40 Letters from the Father's Heart. And, and a big question that people are asking me is, but, you know, can everybody hear God speak? And I would say one of the greatest ways that God speaks to us is through his word. But I've really only discovered that recently, sadly, um, through his word and through his Holy Spirit revealing the truth and the wonder of God's word to us. And I remember God showing me, because, I mean, that's a big move, you know, for us to, to up sticks. My, my husband offered this, um, was offered this position in Dubai. And although it sounded really exciting, it was a big thing for us to leave everything we had in England. You know, we'd built up, I'd lived in England then for 10 years. Um, 
But I read the story of the Shunammite woman. God led me to that beautiful story where Elisha the prophet goes to her and says, there's going to be a famine in the land and you need to leave. Uh, and, and, you know, God will bring you back at some point. And so she was, she left. And I, I think I'm right in saying she was away for, for a number of years. And then she came back. And I just sensed that this was God um, telling us. And so we lived in Dubai for a couple of years. And then we moved to South Africa and we lived there for five years. And so we were out of the country for about seven years when, well, probably around about six years, we sensed that God was calling us back to England. So all of this time I'd lived in, in England for 10 years, but I'd really found it difficult because um, I'd never, it felt as if I had never chosen to live in England. I'd never chosen to make the UK my home. It kind of just happened. Um, and so I'd always missed my family terribly. I'd really hankered back to home in, a, in, a, in quite a bad way. I remember being in tears almost weekly um, on the phone, you know, just far too expensive phone bills. I don't think WhatsApp existed at the time, so I wasn't able to have phone calls via my uh, Wi-Fi. So, uh, you know, my phone calls were just way too expensive because I was missing my family too much. But this time felt different. It felt like God was calling us. And so out of a willingness to follow God, we chose to go. And so my husband got a job back in London and uh, I was tidying things up with the children. They were finishing school. Uh, I quit my job. We sold the car at the airport, um, gave up the, the house we were renting and the children's school places. And I went to check in and I was told that my visa that I had at the time was no longer valid for England. And so at the airport with our eight-year-old children, uh, I had to call my husband and tell him we are not coming over because my visa is no longer valid. And so this was huge. I was ashamed, I was embarrassed, I had neglected to look at the specifications of this particular visa. And, you know, I, I guess I'd just become a blasé, really, about traveling, because I'd been living in, in England for so long, I'd been traveling all over Europe, we'd lived in Dubai, and I just had forgotten to look into anything like that I assumed that um, I would be okay so the very very long story short is that it took us 10 months to be able to get a spouse visa but it was 10 months of us having to live apart from my husband he was still in um, in England it was a bit complicated because his visa for South Africa had expired so it was just, just the nature of being married to someone of a different nationality. And so I, I was broken. I was completely broken. As a mother, having to, I just felt so bad for my kids who were in tears every night because they missed their dad. My husband was completely distracted. And so the job that he had, he lost because he was desperate for his family to come over. And so his um, period of, you know, those first three months in his new job just didn't go well enough. And so he had to get a new job. And so for these 10 months, we had to live apart. And eventually we were reunited and God made a way for us to be together. But I came back to England really broken. And I remember we were in High Wycombe at the time and I was a pretty big mess. 
But I can just see how the Lord, again, through his beautiful kindness and his amazing grace, started slowly but surely rebuilding my heart. He is close to the brokenhearted. He is near to those who are crushed in spirit. And I felt like I was crushed in spirit. Um, I had lost my spark. And that was really, really sad. But it was out of that brokenness, out of the ashes, that God began to rebuild me and make me new. And that's the promise of the Bible is that God will, he transforms us. He changes us through his Holy Spirit. But that only happens as we hear his voice over our lives, whether it comes through his word, the Bible, or if it comes through what we see in creation, maybe through a song. Um, perhaps it is that still small voice, like I heard when I was 13 years old, Ruth, choose this day who you will serve. That transformation, that change happens when we listen, when we still ourselves and we hear the voice of our maker over our lives. I remember putting the radio on one day. I had UCB on because I was still a presenter. I was doing a freelance um, few shows. I was doing, a, I think, a Friday night, Saturday night and Sunday night, and I was recording it from our, our home, from the bedroom. <laughs> so I was kind of, uh, before everybody else went into lockdown, I was doing that, recording the show. Uh, I was recording from Dubai, actually and South Africa, I was doing my program from all over the world. It's amazing. I was still connected to UCB all those years. Um, but I remember switching on the radio and listening in to a song called You're Gonna Be Okay. It's the first time I ever heard it by Jen Johnson. And it just uh, spoke so deeply to me. It was like God was turning up the volume of his voice in my heart and letting me know that I was going to be okay because I didn't think I would be. I thought that, you know, how can I come back from this? And so out of that place, God began to rebuild me. Now, part of what was happening in my life at the time was also that I was writing for our daily bread ministries. I'd been given this amazing opportunity. I, I chose when I was in um, Dubai to do a postgrad in journalism. And part of that, uh, one of the modules was that I had to approach a, um, a publisher to see if they would accept unsolicited work. And so I sent them a few little logs that I'd written or I found something to send them. They kind of like that. So I've been writing for our Daily Bread Ministries as uh, under their Our Daily Journal, Our Daily Journey, that's it. It was called Our Daily Journey. And I wrote for them for probably about three years. But part of this, and this is what I was talking about earlier, where I had to get into the discipline now, it was work for me, of reading through and writing a devotional on two Old Testament books of the Bible and one New Testament book of the Bible. And so through that discipline of having to do that so that I would get paid for these devotionals that I was writing, I began to fall in love with reading God's word. So it went from work and a job and doing something that I had to do to me getting to a point where I I didn't want to go a day without reading the Bible. And I realized it was starting to soften my heart. It was starting to change me. Um, and, it, and it started to bring a newness of life in me. And it started to awaken uh, what I thought was completely dead. And so it was through God's word and through the kindness of God and through the Holy Spirit since that time that he has started to rebuild me. I will go back for just a moment to that time in South Africa. Uh, you know, I panicked. And one of the first things I did was apply for a different visa because someone had said that it, it could work. And that fell flat. We lost 
thousands of pounds. My husband had to sell the house that he'd first bought. Um, and we just plowed all of that money into trying to get me and the kids over. We lost so much money. We lost our pride. We lost everything. I had to go back with a begging bowl, begging for my job back, which I didn't get back. I had to beg for places for the kids for their schooling, which they did get back. But Life Stories Life Stories.